Hello designers, this is part 2 of the InDesign certification tips and tricks video. In this video, I'm just showing you a few more tips and tricks that, for questions that you may expect to see on the Adobe InDesign certification test. It's a much shorter version than the original, so if you haven't watched the original, please check it out. I will have it linked in the description bar of this video. Um, make sure you guys are using your practice files as you go through the video so that you guys can practice along and get prepared for your certification test. If we know each other in person, then of course please ask me uh, if you need any help. And if we don't know each other because you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to leave questions in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. So without further ado, here's your video. On the Adobe InDesign certification test, you will have several questions asking you to create new documents for Scratch. Some of them are going to be for the web and some will be for print. You're going to be given measurements and then you have to determine based on the measurements and the unit of measurement what output the document is going to be created for. So whether it's going to be for print or for web purposes. One of the questions you may expect to see is going to have you create a new document and it's going to give you the unit of measurement in pixels. Right away, if I see the unit of measurement in pixels, then I know its output is going to be for the web. So I don't necessarily need to be told in the question description that it's going to be a document for web publication. The fact that it's listed in pixels automatically tells me I have to make sure I select the web preset so that all the other settings match up with the needs for web publication. So it has right resolution and it has the measurements listed in pixels and everything's going to be up to scratch. It's probably going to give you the measurements as I mentioned and it's going to give you a set of margins for you to edit. So if you notice right now I'm going and editing the default margins and changing them to the measurements that were given to me in the actual trust which is a hundred pixels. You'll notice that because the measurements are linked, each of the measurements are going to change default in the margins from the top, bottom, left, and right, and so forth. If they're not linked, you're going to need to input them one by one. You may also be asked to create documents for print, and the measurements for these are going to be listed in picas. So if you see that the measurement is listed in picas, which is a measurement that you use only for print, um, documents, then you know right away you have to select the print preset. It might also give you the measurements in inches. Now if you go and click on print, you'll see that by default the unit of measurement is picas, but if the question is saying make the document 14 inches by 11 inches, then you will need to go and change the unit of measurements to inches just like I did here, and then input all the other settings like for example, the number of pages, the number of columns, and so forth. Here they're also asking me to create a new preset so that I have this document available anytime I want to create um, a menu in this case. So you'll see that I clicked on that little arrow on top of the name so that I could click Save Preset and then I can actually double check and my preset is saved so that if I wanted to create another document with these measurements, I would just click on the preset and it would speed up my editing process. You'll have several questions that are going to have you edit the colors that are being used on different objects on your InDesign document. In this case, they had a question where they had me change the different colors that were being used on two objects on InDesign using the swatches panel. Now you can see the swatches panel is missing from my workspace, so I needed to know where to find it. I went to Window, Color, and Swatches, and here are all the default swatches it gives you. It might give you the actual name of the swatch, or it might give you the hex code for the swatch, so you really have to um, look for how they want you to select that different color. So to change the color of this rectangle, I just selected it and then clicked on the red swatch. But then I noticed that I had it set to my stroke. So I had to go and switch the little boxes at the top of the swatches panel so that I could change the fill to red and leave the stroke at its default um, settings. So do be weary of that. Make sure that you guys are changing the right 
um, fill color if that's what they're asking for. In this case, they wanted me to also change the color of the path. So I needed to make sure the stroke was set because for a path, I basically just see the outline. There's no fill to it. So I had to make sure I switched those two um, little boxes at the top of the swatches panel again so I could make sure that I applied the right swatch corresponding to that shape. You'll also expect to see some questions having you delete unused swatches. So here you can see the only two colors I'm using are yellow and this pink color. So I had to go find the swatches panel and I had to figure out a way to delete all the ones that were not being used. I went to window, color and swatches yet again and I clicked on the horizontal bars on the top right hand side of the swatches panel. Then I selected the option that said select all unused. And you can see that I highlighted all of the unused swatches in blue. So all I had to do then was just click the little trash can icon at the bottom of the swatches panel and they were all gone and I didn't have to deal with them anymore. One question that stood out had you edit the header row of a table on InDesign. You can see this is a format for a very basic table with the title at the top and then a header row with three columns. You can see the header row was not formatted correctly because it does not show on the second page of the document if you scroll down. So the task that you were given was to change it so that you were formatting the header row correctly and the header row would show on every single page. You have to click inside of the header row with your type tool. If you don't click with the type tool, it's not going to work. Then you go up to the table menu and select table options and table setup. Then you would click on the headers and footers and then add one header row. And then underneath it, you would select the option that said once per page where it says repeat header. So it really depends on what the question is asking for. The question was asking for once per page, so that's what I selected. Now you can see the header row was added, but it was empty. So I basically had to go and copy and paste the words into the actual header row so that they would be listed on every single page of the document. Okay, that's it for my second round of InDesign tips and tricks. I hope that has been helpful to you. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future videos, and I hope you pass your test. Peace out.